Hi, my name's Mark. I'm one of the pastors here at Trillium. We are at Trillium looking over the next month, and at least the month of July, a, a series called Walking in the Spirit. And this week we're looking at Walking in the Spirit, colon, grace. Grace. I, I recently got back from a ho- couple weeks' holidays, and during the holidays I got a chance to play Junior Monopoly with a couple of kids. And uh, the first game I played, I, I haven't played Monopoly in decades. And, um, so I'm rolling the dice, and I can't land on any of the good properties at all. I'm getting on the chance cards and all the places where you have to pay fines and that sort of stuff. And quickly, it occurs to me that I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to win. In fact, I'm out of the game very quickly, and I lose. So a couple of days later, I play the game again, and all the dice rolls are going in my favor, and I'm landing on the best properties, and people are rolling their dice and landing on my properties, and I'm getting all the money from them, and at the end of the game, I win. And I'm thinking that the difference between the two games, the experience of the two games, radically different, from almost opposites. And I've been one night out playing cards, euchre or whatever, and I get all the great cards, and the next night I go out to play cards, and I got nothing. And, and this kind of topsy-turvy life that we live in seems to get manifested in games of chance. And that's how the ancient people saw God, the gods, so to speak, as this pernicious giver and taker of blessing. One day, everything is going in your favor. Everything seems to be uh, going easy for you, getting all the traffic lights and all the blessings coming to you. And the next day, it's been taken back from you. You're getting all the hard heartache of life getting tossed at you. Nothing seems to be going your way. And into that world, the early Jesus followers uh, are, are pronouncing or taking forward a, a, a new understanding of God. Not a pernicious God, but a loving God. Not a fickle God that needs to be placated or appeased or cajoled, but a, a God of, of love and care for us. Uh, a God of, of trust and steadfastness for us. A God of life. And, and, he, and God is described as this parent, this Father in Heaven who looks out over his children's best interests. Not a God who takes and, and then gives at his own pleasure. You know, uh, the difference between uh, the early church's understanding of God and the ancient world was, comes down to a word called grace. And in the, in the New Testament, in the Greek, grace is associated with joy. It, it comes out of joy. The word charis has at its core a sense of joy in it. And in the ancient world, the notion of making joy happen, which is the source of the word for grace, it means... Uh, uh, making joy uh, occur through the giving of gifts to people. It means that uncalculating, open-hearted, generous gift-giving that we uh, give to one another. And this is the grace that the New Testament understands that God is giving to us this day, that God has this open-hearted, good-natured desire to bless and bless and bless and bless us over and over and over again. The English, on the other hand, we, the grace the word grace comes from an old French word, which means to give thanks, which is why we call saying grace at the dinner table is an opportunity to give God thanks, to say thanks. And it's usually a marker of being blessed by God. It's about the sense that we've been blessed over and over again, and we give thanks for our blessings. So there is a kind of correlation between the two, but the Greek has a much stronger sense of joy to it, and the English has a much stronger sense of thankfulness in it as well. Now, uh, I was thinking about being graceful. If I was to ask you uh, what a graceful person would be like, it would be someone who was um, very much at ease. They would be someone marked by elegance and harmony with an ease of action and attitude, a sense of poise about them. And I was thinking about the actress uh, Grace Kelly, a wonderful actress, young woman when she actually left Hollywood and went to get uh, married to the Prince of Monaco back in the 50s. She was the epitome of grace and poise to the point where a lot of the other actors who worked with her adored her. She only had five or six films, and yet she established a certain credibility with other actors because of this sense of poise and her goodness and her, her elegance and her sense of dignity. Uh, Gary Cooper said she was basically the gem of all actresses he ever worked with. And Cary Grant was asked when he was remembering who his favorite actress was, he said without hesitation, with, well, with all due respect to dear Ingrid Bergman, I much preferred Grace. She had serenity. 
And I'm thinking to myself, this is what I think people would really like to have in life, this sense of grace, this elegance and poise, even in the difficulty of life, even when life's coming at you hard, even when the cards aren't in your favor or you're not making the die rolls. We like to have this certain elegance and poise, this good naturedness, this sense of ease and harmony in us. I, I remember uh, just back in the 90s, there was a, another show with a Grace Kelly, the character named Grace Kelly called Grace Under Fire. And this woman was very different from uh, the Grace Kelly, the actress. She was a down-home country girl working in a kind of blue-collar job. She had married an alcoholic, abusive husband. She herself was an alcoholic. The show's premise is that she's recovering from all this abuse in her life, and she's trying to make some sane choices for herself. And, and there's a double entendre in the, in the title. There's Grace, the character, under fire in life, and then there's the sense of grace within her being put under great pressure. And of course, in the show, she's the only one that seems to be able to keep her head in difficult circumstances. I thought about another character in TV named Gomer Pyle. He, he started on the uh, Andy Griffith show and then he got his own series called Gomer Pyle USMC. If you've seen the series, Gomer Pyle is this kind of backward, unsophisticated, naive, rather simple man. He's gentle, loving, kind, and uncalculating. And in the last episode of the fourth season of the Andy Griffith Show, there's a pilot for him, and he joins the Marines. This guy that, who's the most unmarine-like guy in the whole world joins the Marines, and in, in this encounter with the sergeant, Sergeant Carter, he exemplifies this incredible sense of good-naturedness. When the sergeant's coming down on him everything in every way, he simply interprets everything with a sense of generosity and goodness. He, see, he sees a good world out there. He sees a, a good world moving through people. He sees people acting out of their best instincts towards him, and he, he interprets everything through that lens to the point where there's this great scene where the, the sergeant's after him for moving too slow, and, and, and he's ch ch you know, going after him and after him, and he finally says, hey, my grandmother can move faster than you, and, and Gomer Pyle says, well, blast her heart, and it's wonderful. And I'm thinking to myself, what happens if God is actually kind of like Gomer Pyle? Not this God of our imagination who's the judge, who's looking for every little mistake we make, ready to discipline us and whack us and give us a hard time, but God is actually like Gomer Pyle, uh, generous, kind, caring, always seeking the best in us, always looking for the best, always encouraging us to the best, always supporting us with his spirit that nurtures us in, in best activities in our lives. And God has this generous, open-hearted goodness pouring out blessing upon blessing on us. What happens if God is like Gomer Pyle? What would it mean for us who follow Jesus to be in that light? You see, a lot of times people look at church people as being highly judgmental and critical, when in fact it's a kind of a tragedy for that because maybe God is like Gomer Pyle, maybe Jesus is kind of like Gomer Pyle himself. You know, there's Jesus uh, put under huge stress in his life, and yet he manifests grace and poise and dignity, even to the point of being on the cross and saying, God, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. That's grace under fire. And I think it seems to me that if we're followers of Jesus, we should be embarking on living out grace under fire and letting that inner sense of poise and dignity, that good-naturedness in us manifest itself in all circumstances. And when we do that, there is rejoicing. There is rejoicing in the heavenly realms for us this day because we have become like God. And I, I pray that when you meet the trials in your life, the difficulties, even the traffic lights not turning for you, that you'll remember to manifest grace in that moment and let your good nature come forward. Let God's peace, your peace, let God's joy, your joy, let God's poise and dignity surface in all your life. Go in peace. Till next week, may God always nurture you in the ways of grace.